And this had to be a Boolean expression, and this had to be, well, it, it's a little, it might, the grammar in reality might be a little different, but I don't want to make it too complicated. But you might want to separate and make a different non-terminal for this kind of expression and a different one for that, and you might not. We're not. Yeah, Teresa? What does it mean to be a terminal? Like, what does that get? The terminal means that it's going to sit there when we're all done and be something that gets generated from this. It could be part of the language when we're all finished. These, these angle bracket things will all disappear. And when, it, when they do, there's going to be nothing left but if a equals 3, then there'll be nothing left but terminals? Or there'll be nothing, left nothing left but terminals. The terminal symbols are the things that are left over when you finish generating the string. No, there's no difference. I mean, A is a very, in fact, no, they're the same thing. IF or an A or zero or anything else would all be the same. The same terminals, no difference. This is just like HTML, all these little tags disappear. Now you're confusing me. Um, <laughs> not, no, not exactly. Uh, this represents a structure that lets you you know, build things. I think you understand that, that, that this lets you build these long strings that end up looking like Pascal programs. Yeah. So when you're finished building one of those programs through this structure, all the angle bracket things have disappeared. But it's not because, you know, some, somebody processed them and, and, and they're tagged, you know, open and closed. It, it is the same in, to the extent that some program looks at this thing, looks at the tags, takes the tags away, and then results in something in the end. Yeah. But what happens in the middle is really quite different. Yeah. Is, is there a reason you're specific, specifically tying this example to Pascal rather than some other language? Is it more suited to this? Or? Pascal's simpler. Uh, the whole syntax diagram for Pascal takes two and a half pages. I could Xerox it for you and hand it out in the back of one of my old Pascal books. And that's why we do it. And in fact, if you look at any problems, there's a problem a little bit similar like this in your own text. They're always done with these kind of old languages because the new languages are just too ugly to give a real picture of. Okay. Especially, I mean, Java's got, I don't know how ugly it would look, but it would be a lot more complicated than this. Try. Yeah. Um, if you were to have like symbols, like let's say you needed parentheses around the if-then expression, mm. would they show up here at yes. point, as a terminal? Yes, they would. In fact, where they really would show up would be in the, ex the expression itself might allow parentheses. And then they would show up as terminals in the productions of the expression. But yes, parentheses would show up as terminal symbols in these things. But they'd show up in the expression, not in the event. Probably. Well, no, I mean, it, it, if we insisted on the expression being surrounded by parentheses, no matter what, regardless of the expression, then it would show up right here, open, close. But the expression itself might have parentheses, which get generated by its own productions. OK, so, so yes to both parts, really. All right, where are we up to? What else haven't I done? Um, expression I haven't done, right? And I haven't done ID. I'm not going to do expression because it's complicated. It'll take a long time. But you know what it's like? Remember what I did the other day? Uh, S goes to A plus A, B times B, and then those symbols. That's very close to what an expression is that for production grammar that generates expressions. I am going to do ID, though, because this will give us another practice with converting syntax diagrams to context-free grammars. What's your typical identifier in a programming language? Typically, you have to start with some letter A to Z, and then continue with letters A to Z, followed by you know, digits 0 through 9, and maybe some other symbols as well. And you can go as long as you want. Here's what it looks like. A letter followed by a letter or a digit. Let's just say that's all you can do. And then you can end. That's a syntax diagram. Start with a letter, continue with any letters or digits. So you're requiring it to be at least two letters or one letter and a digit. Uh, at least one letter. It doesn't have to be two letters. It doesn't have to go into 
Is that what it's it can, no, it can go right up. And of course, you know, we can add underscores or dashes or anything else you want to allow in identifiers in this list. All right, how do we make a grammar to do this? And you don't do it in one production this time, or in two productions like we did before. In fact, you can't even easily just do it using a single non-terminal. So let's, let's think about how. Basically, here's the idea. Anytime you see a loop in a syntax diagram, pull that out and identify that with its own non-terminal. So what's really happening here is that an ID is a letter followed by, I'll call this temp, followed by this loop. Anytime you get a loop, yank it out and make it its own procedure, so to speak. OK, take it out of the recursion. So ID, letter temp. And temp has the recursion on it. What is temp going to look like? It can be temp followed by a letter. That's this loop. It can be temp followed by a digit. That's this loop. And what can it terminate with? Well, temp starts here. So it can terminate with nothing. Okay? It doesn't have to terminate with a letter or a digit. It can actually be, it can actually be no occurrences. So this gives you. This is, ex this is just like um, 0 plus 1 star. I can have any letters and digits I want in any order I want, and then I can stop, including the empty string. So that's what you do. If you see a syntax diagram, look for the loops, yank them out, identify them with their own non-terminals, and then put the placekeeper back in here. So ID goes to letter temp, and temp has this loop in it. That's enough of an example for if, if, I, you know, if I made you do it, and I probably won't, for you to go look at syntax diagrams and, and unravel them and turn them into grammars. But enough for you to get the sense that they're the same. Uh, Bacchus Nower form, BNF, is very much like these grammar situations. And extended BNF is like these syntax diagrams. The syntax diagrams is a pictorial version of extended BNF, which basically lets you say, Letter followed by either letter or temp repeated as many times as you want. It looks like the kind of stuff you get in Tickle when you, when you have regular expression uh, generators. Looks a little like that. Yeah, Kevin and then uh, Joe. You're not allowed to um, assign a value to a word like begin or if, um, but this production could generate those words. So how do you prevent that from happening? Does it just get really complicated production-wise, or is there like a more simple way to short circuit that? That's a really good question. That's an excellent question. Uh, it's an excellent question. Uh, I'm hesitating because I don't really have the time to give you a really good answer for it. Here's the short answer. The short answer is that there's a whole bunch of words in the language that are reserved words that cannot be used as an identifier. And those are enumerated and taken care of in this parsing step so that you would never accidentally generate them here. I mean, all right. It's a lot to talk about there. Yeah, John. If you had a limit on the variable length, like they could be no longer the same mm. how, how do you figure that into this? Not that way. Huh? Anybody have an idea? 15. Right, you have 15 non-terminals. You just remember. You use your non-terminals to remember a count. The, the thing about context-free grammars is that they can represent infinite things. But if you want them to essentially be finite, you're just going to have a lot more non-terminals to remember how far you've gone. So you'll have one non-terminal that says, you know, this is a 15-letter string. That depends on a 14-letter. That depends on a 13-letter. What's a one-letter string? Single letters. So you can do that. Uh, Letters and digits, I didn't write out either, but it's kind of obvious. Letters go to terminal symbols, A, B, C, D, F to Z. Digits go 0 through 9. We can't and there's a, fra there's a fragment of a grammar here. Yeah, we done. can't leverage the power of our stack that we've been given by being in a no longer just a finite state machine to uh, keep track of how many we've got? Sure you can. You don't need to, though. I mean, if it's finite, then even a finite state machine can do it. Right, but if you I just mean, don't need that power for the, for you, what Joe asked. We're doing 200 allowed a variable length of 200. You don't want to have 200 different states, do you? 